Hello, it's Kristen, and today is the third video of the summer book club that Heather from A Catholic Mom's Life is hosting. And the book is The Handbook for Catholic Moms by Lisa Hendy. And please watch the other videos I have linked below. Um, everyone has different insights, and it's really great to hear different perspectives on the same chapter that we're all reading. <laughs> and so today's chapter is about friendship and companionship among women, soul sisters. And I just love my friendships. I am so blessed in this area of my life. Um, and the author starts off this chapter with, you know, her husband is her best friend, as is mine. And, um, you know, I talk about everything with my husband. I love him so much. I don't think I have a passing thought that I don't share with my husband. Um, but, you know, men and women have different communicating styles. And even though I do tell my husband pretty much everything, um, I just love that feedback that I get from women in my life. You know, my husband will say, you know, oh, that's great, or I'm glad you came to that conclusion. <laughs> but women will just have so much to give in conversation about various topics. So I just love all the women in my life, and I'm so grateful to have them. Um, the author mentions that she grew up with sisters, and so at first she was not a good friend, and she uh, apologized to some of her friendships in the beginning of her life. I actually was the opposite. <laughs> I have a brother, I love him so much, um, but I didn't have any sisters growing up and so I craved that female bond and so I gave a bit too much in friendship. So I kind of let people walk all over me and I would just just give myself in friendship and it took some time for me to learn to keep my friendships balanced. So if I had a friend that, you know, just wasn't making the effort, uh, I eventually learned to let go a little bit. You know, I still love them and, you know, if they do make time to see me, I'll see them uh, joyfully, but um, I really do focus more on the friendships that are balanced. So. If a friend is reaching out to me, I will reach back out to them, and it's beautiful. We give to each other, and that's not to say, you know, if a friend is in need, I will definitely go right back to that, that full giving of myself, um, and usually, you know, it'll balance back out again. Um, so I hope I explained that well. Um, the author talks about moving to a new city and how it's important to make new friends. I can 100% relate to this. Uh, a few years ago, I moved to a completely new state. I did not know a soul. And, you know, I met some great people at my parish, some amazing people at my work. And I met a couple friends who I just love to death. They're actually the wives of my husband's uh, classmates. I do consider them lifelong friends. and. One of those friends that I met, I actually sponsored um, when she joined the Catholic Church. So uh, as a sponsor, I was only required to be there for the rites, but I just loved the process so much that I went to every single class with her, and she was very appreciative that I did that. Um, but I told her, you know, look, this is my thing, Catholicism. Like, I love being here. I love supporting you. And I'm also refreshing my knowledge and even learning some new things. And... So that was such a blessing. And now I've moved to a new city again. I did not want to leave um, where I just was living. And um, I have met new friends and I'm so grateful. Uh, I attend a women's group. We meet twice a month, um, but the members of the group also meet for various other events uh, with the men's group or church events. And um, within the group, there is a, another woman who recently moved here. So we instantly connected because we're both like, we don't know anyone and we both weren't working much. So we get together uh, usually once a week if we're both in town. Um, recently, we went to a civil rights museum 
which we enjoyed so much just learning about civil rights and it's just crazy I won't go off on a tangent but it wasn't not that long ago that there was just uh, insane injustices that it's just hard to fathom right now anyway love that women's group love getting together with them uh, I've also met women uh, volunteering um, my neighborhood has a women's group um, I haven't really made any friendships yet but it's summer now, so I think we're gonna have pool parties, so I'll meet some of my neighbors. Then, um, also musicians. I've met some musicians that I've worked with. And yoga. <laughs> I know yoga is controversial for Catholics, but I promise, don't worry about me. My yoga class is completely focused on the physical, the muscles and stretching and strength training and it is not spiritual at all. My teacher, she teaches us extra things, extra physical things. So body pump, which is, um, you know, strength training with weights, like aerobic, an aerobic workout with weights and reflexology. And unfortunately, recently she broke her wrist. So we're doing lots of wrist exercises. Um, and so I've met some women through yoga and um, I promise, uh, there's nothing spiritual about it. There are actually a lot of Christians in the class, um, and we're all just focused on our physical health in that class. Um, one of the girls in the class, you know, she's like a fitness coach, and she sells, you know, the meal replacement drinks, and so it's been great to get to know those women. Um, and in the book, the author talks about virtual friends, and this is my first time ever really having virtual friends um, that I'm developing on YouTube, which is cool. And the author talks about um, how she has virtual friends all over the country. She could probably do a cross-country trip and stay with all of them. Um, she does uh, make a side note of safety, you know, whenever you're meeting someone uh, that you've met online, always be safe. And she also mentions internet addiction, which many of us in this world are struggling with. So if you have any internet addiction problems, just turn it off and go seek help. As always, she has some homework assignments. Um, first, she mentions uh, you should take inventory of the women in your life who provide support and companionship and you can call or write to them and thank them. I love to text, um, but I like to text my friends um, when you know something comes up that makes me think of them or something comes across you know, my way that I think they might enjoy. Um, that's when I reach out to them. Uh, I think there's sort of a pressure sometimes with people uh, needing to reply right away uh, to messages so I try not to you know overwhelm my friends with messages but I definitely do send them random words of love when I think of them uh, the author also writes you know if you don't have friends cultivate a new attitude of openness to new friends and you know to go somewhere new and be open to meeting people um, you never know where you'll meet someone, just have an open mind. I know when I first moved here, I went to like a belly dancing class through the YMCA and you know, a friendship didn't come out of that, but I did meet some nice people and um, I'm glad I did that. Um, she, The author also mentions it would be great to spend 10 minutes in prayer for your friends. Um, I love this. Um, the women's group that I mentioned, we have a prayer box. So every time we meet, you can just drop in a prayer and we pass the box around. And uh, one of my friends and I, we don't really like pulling the prayers out of the box that way. So she actually typed them all up and gave me a copy. So I actually have those prayers always and I pray for them. The author also gives the assignment of inviting a friend out for coffee or lunch once a week. And I think that is a great assignment. You know, some of us are too digital and, you know, even if you're busy, you can work out some way to see a friend in person. I think it's really important that we 
have fellowship in person. You know, I think if you have a lot of kids, you can meet up with a mom who also has kids and sort of do something together. Um, or, you know, when your husbands are free, you know, have like a daddy daycare night and let the moms get together. I know some of my um, in-laws do that. I have a really great brother-in-law who will watch all of the kids so that the moms can go out. He's amazing. God bless him. So the homework assignment about going out with friends once a week, I do that mainly with um, the friend that is new to this area. I love meeting up with her. Oh, and side note, I'm also throwing a baby shower for her. She's expecting, so it's so exciting. The last assignment was to say hello to new people. And I always do this in my yoga class. You know, after working out, people are usually like in a rush to get out of there. And I try, and I am too, but I try to take a moment to say hi to the new people. Um, and, you know, sometimes we'll walk back to our cars together and talk a little bit. Um, there are web resources at the end of this chapter. One web resource that isn't in the book is Blessed Is She. I love Blessed Is She. I love the daily devotionals that they have for free. Um, but they also host brunches for women to get together and meet like-minded women. And uh, so I'll link that below if you're interested. I haven't been to one of these brunches because I already have a bit of a network where I am and I just haven't had time. But, you know, if we move again, I will consider that in the future. And so if you don't have a lot of friends in your life right now, local friends, um, definitely check out Blessed Is She. I hope you enjoyed this video. Treasure your friends and be open to new friends. And I hope you have a wonderful day and check out the other videos below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.